In my previous video I've hacked my IKEA desk and designed some custom electronics that now need a new housing. If you are interested in electronics you might want to check out that video before watching this one. Now however it's about designing and 3D printing a new case for all that stuff. So while the original assembly just held two buttons for the up and down movement, we now have two new buttons for saving positions. Additionally there are two new PCBs that need an enclosure as well. So this is what it will look like at the end of the day. I'd like to try a different approach for this video since this table hack is more sort of an electronics project than a mechanical design project. I'll make a speed run by rushing through almost two hours of mechanical design work in just a couple of minutes. After finishing I'll be back to print and install this unit. With that said, lean back and have fun watching me design this case. So there you have it, it looks pretty nice actually. Let's open that in Cura, slice it and send it over to the printer. I'm using PLA since the rigidity is not an issue and it's a lot easier to handle than ABS. Because we don't need that much detail, I chose a pretty rough layer height and 20% infill to save a lot of print time. While this case was printing, I took the opportunity to overthink the buttons just a little bit because I'm not too happy with them. I thought it may be better to connect them to a single part. This will make it look and feel a bit stiffer than four separate buttons wobbling around. So let's get back to Fusion and open that button sketch to create these little interconnections. The most important part here is to make sure the bridges are not too stiff, otherwise the whole unit might press more than one button at the same time. I chose 2mm as a value here. Alright, so let's slice and print this part and then we are ready for the assembly. Well, this is not the best looking print, but you know, who cares. It took only about 2.5 instead of 9 hours to print. The buttons fit nicely and do have enough clearance. So by inserting and tightening all boards, let's screw this unit in place and give it a final test. As you might have noticed, I need to plug in a USB cable to operate this. Even though I've connected the 3.3V of the Arduino to the 3.3V rail of the stock board, we still need a 5V supply. The Atmega 328P would operate at that low voltage, but the way they wired up the whole board requires 5V. So we could either use a boost converter or simply use the USB mini socket to provide that 5V. I don't really care to have a cable plugged in, so I'll leave it like that. We now successfully hacked and improved the IKEA Become table. I hope you had fun watching the entire hack. See you next time.